All right, we are now going to do part two of their chapter nine. Chapter nine, part two was all non-calculator. You will be allowed to use a calculator on this particular part of the exam, um, but uh, when we actually did it, we were not allowed to use a calculator, and all your answers need to be exact answers as you go here. So the first one, um, we're going to convert from radians to degrees or degrees to radians. So if I have something in degrees, I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. And so that gives me negative 150 pi over 180, which reduces to negative 5 pi over 6. Next one, if I want to transfer into degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi. Again, multiplying straight across, so the pi's cancel. This would cancel to be 60. Without using a calculator, you get 300. Again, you will be allowed to use a calculator, but anytime you're converting from degrees to radians, you multiply by pi over 180. Anytime you're going from radians to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. Coterminal angles. Anytime you're doing something that's coterminal, you're adding or subtracting 360. If you're in degrees, or you're adding and subtracting 2 pi if you're in radians. So if I'm adding and subtracting 360, if I, if I subtract 360, I get negative 765. If I add 360, I get negative 45. So I have to add another 360 in order to get to a positive coterminal. So they're asking me for a positive and a negative coterminal. Fractions now, 5 pi over 2 plus 2 pi. Getting a common denominator, this would be 9 halves pi. And then 5 pi over 2, subtracting 2 pi. Again, getting a common denominator, you get um, pi over 2, which is positive. So then I'm going to subtract another negative 2 pi to get negative 3 halves pi. So all of those would be, anytime you're adding 2 pi, every single time you're going to get a coterminal angle. Anytime you're subtracting 2 pi, you're going to also get a, co a coterminal angle. They are giving you the terminal side is at the point 3 negative 5. So down here in the right hand corner at the point 3, negative 5, and I want to draw a triangle and find the missing side. So the missing side is the square root of 29. So now doing all of my sine, cosine, tangent, remember it's opposite over hypotenuse, so the sine would be negative 5 over 29, multiplying both the top and the bottom. Cosine would be, I'm going to put it down here, 3 over the square root of 29, rationalize. Tangent would be opposite over adjacent. Cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. Now going back over here, this was the square root of 29. So now I get the square root of 29 over negative 5. And then this one running out of space here would be the square root of 29 over 3. So I can give you a, a, a point and ask you to come up with the six trigonometric functions. Then I also can give you one trig function and a quadrant to put it in. So we're talking about the second quadrant. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So finding the hypotenuse would be 5. So this one's a little bit easier than the last one. And I, don't give, I didn't give myself a lot of space here, but sine would be 3 fifths. Cosine would be negative 4 fifths. Tangent would be 3 fourths. They gave you cotangent already. Uh, reciprocals, and there's all six trigonometric functions. All right, so now they are going to give you the angle measure. So you have to draw the picture for a 3 pi over 4, which is in this second quadrant with a 45 degree reference angle. 1, 1, square root of 2, this one's negative. And so all you then have to do is get the correct sides for this particular, so opposite over hypotenuse. And rationalize. Negative pi over 6. So I'm going the opposite direction. Negative pi over 6 is a 30 degree reference angle. 1 square root of 3, 2. This one's negative. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent, 2 thirds pi. So now, tangent of 2 thirds pi, I'm going to draw 2 thirds pi which has a 60 degree reference angle, 1, square root of 3, 2, this one's negative. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. The answer is negative square root of 3 over 2. Now for our most challenging question, negative 
3 pi over 2 is on an axis. These are called, con uh, these are called uh, um, angles that are on the axis, are quadrantal angles, sorry. And so this would be the point 0, 1. Cosine is always the x value of the unit circle. Sine is always the y value of the unit circle. Tangent would always be y over x. So in this particular case, you're talking about 0, the x value of a quadrantal angle. Drawing negative 5 sixth pi, so it's in the third quadrant here, 30 degree reference angle. Both of these are negative, so going down and going to the left are negative, so opposite over hypotenuse. And the last one is another quadrantal angle, still at the point 0, 1. Now, cosine is x, sine is y. Well, this is 1 over sine. Because cosecant is 1 over sine, and the sine for this one is 1, so you're talking about 1 over 1, which is 1. Now, big thing to talk about right now is the restraints. As you are going to answer these questions, you need to understand the restraints for this question is basically in the first quadrant for sine, the first, excuse me, the first quadrant for all positives, and then the second quadrant for cosine, and the fourth quadrant for sine and tangent. So as you're looking at this, all of them in the first quadrant, all negative cosines, all negative tangents, and negative sines, and the reciprocals thereof too. So here we go. I have a negative cosine. So I'm going to draw it in the second quadrant and cosine. Now I want to know the angle measure that creates this. That's what the question is asking for. What angle measure has this scenario? Well, this is the square root of 3 which means this has to be a 60 degree reference angle, which you're talking about every 60 degree reference angle is a three, so this is two pi over three. That's the only one answer for this restraint. Next one, unrationalize. It's positive, opposite and hypotenuse. 45 degree reference angle, one answer of pi over four. So again, you have to understand the restraints you are given. It's a positive first quadrant, 45 degree reference angle, pi over 4 again. Now for the most challenging one. All right, it's positive again. I unrationalized. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So this is a 30 degree reference angle. And so the answer to this question is pi over 6. Notice all of these only have one angle measure that you have to worry about. What happens if you have a negative cosecant? Well, fourth quadrant, this is hypotenuse over opposite. Square root of 3, this is a 30. Now, here's where a lot of people messed up. The restraints don't go around the circle 0 to 2 pi. The restraints go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So they only want this angle as a negative angle measure. In the 0 to 2 pi restraints, now they would want this angle measure as a positive. So the coterminal to this would also be 11 sixth pi. But that is not where the restraints are. The restraints are for the negative angle measure, so that's how you get negative pi over 6. So if any of you out there got 11 sixth pi, you're not wrong. You're just not in the restraints that they gave you. All right, cotangent it is positive. Cotangent is opposite, excuse me, adjacent over opposite, making the last side 2, 30 degree reference angle, pi over 6 again. Now, notice that restraints have changed. Now you're talking about probably two angle measures. So there's two locations where sine is negative. There's two locations where cosine is positive, and so on. So here we go. Negative, I'm going to unrationalize this. So I'm going to get negative 1 square root of 2. So opposite hypotenuse, opposite hypotenuse. The other sides. 45 degree reference angle. So there's two angle measures. Do not give me the negative ones. Notice the restraints are all positive angle measures. So if I was changing colors here, we're, we want this one and we want this one. So our answers are 5 fourths pi and 7 fourths pi. A positive cosine. So 1, 2. It also happens in the fourth quadrant. 
The missing side's the square root of 3. 60 degree reference angle. So one of the answers is pi over 3. The other one going around the circle would be 5 pi over 3. Arc tangent, again, unrationalize. So I've got a negative arc tangent. This would be negative 1 square root of 3. So you're talking about opposite, adjacent. Kind of not, not a very good opposite, adjacent. So now I want this angle measure. This is a 30-degree reference angle. So that angle measure would be 5 pi over 6. And then going all the way around the circle, you're talking about 11 pi over 6. Positive secant. So this is hypotenuse over um, adjacent. So when would the hypotenuse and adjacent be positive, both in these two quadrants? Which is a 45 degree reference angle. So you're talking about pi over 4. And then going around the circle, you're also talking about 7 pi over 4. Sorry about the interruption there. We're back to now. Uh, remember, the restraints are from 0 to 2 pi. So as you're doing cosecant, that's the opposite of sine. So the positive um, 2 over 1. So the hypotenuse would be 2. Opposite would be 1, making the other side the square root of 3. 1, 2, square root of 3. All right, I want to apologize. We seem to have some interruptions there, uh, seniors last day, so I'm going to keep going now. Um, cosecant is the opposite of sine, so you're talking about hypotenuse over opposite. I drew the pictures already. Um, this would be a 30-degree reference angle, so drawing the angle measures, so you have pi over 6 and you have 5 pi over 6. Next one, cotangent and it's negative, so you're talking about adjacent over opposite. So I'm going to... Erase that one, adjacent over opposite. That would also occur in this quadrant, second quadrant here. You'd have adjacent over opposite. The, uh, the missing side would be the square root of 2, which has a 45-degree reference angle, so in radians, 3 fourths pi and 7 fourths pi. Now we're actually going to solve. Isolate the trig function. When you're taking the inverse sine, again, you're asking for the angle measure that gets you the opposite side and the hypotenuse, in this case, for sine. That's a 45-degree reference angle. So you're talking about pi over 4. Again, restraints are important. So you have another angle measure, another one, in which you have the opposite side is positive, and the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. So now you're talking about 3 fourths pi. Cosine squared theta equals 3 fourths. Taking the square root of both sides gets you a positive and a negative. So now you're talking about one picture for your positives, square root of 3 over 2, and one picture for your negative. Some of you might have done this as a bow tie. Uh, 2. So this is a 30-degree reference angle. This would also be a 30-degree reference angle. So now you have pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Those would be two of them. Then you'd have 7 pi over 6, and you'd have 11 pi over 6. So there's four answers, two for the positive and two for the negative. U substitution. If I did U is equal to the cosine of theta, I could rewrite this as 2U squared minus U minus 1 equaling 0. Using our factoring skills, 2U minus 1, or excuse me, 2U plus 1 and U minus 1. Solving, setting these equal to 0, you get U to equal negative a half and U to equal positive 1. Now, coming back, cosine of theta equals negative a half and cosine of theta equaling 1. So now, drawing the picture for negative a half, adjacent, hypotenuse, 
adjacent hypotenuse. That's a 60 degree reference angle. So the two angle measures for this one. Remember, you're always going with the positive restraint here. This would be um, 2 thirds pi and 4 thirds pi. Now for one unit circle, cosine x, sine y. So this would be 0 and 2 pi. Solving sine of theta equals zero to sine theta. They already factored this one for you already. So sine of theta equals square root of three over two. All right, where would, remember, sine y, cosine x. So where would the y values be zero? You're talking about at zero, two pi, and pi. Where would sine be positive square root of three over two again you two angle measures square root of three over two this is a 60 degree reference angle and so you're talking about pi over three and two pi over three and that concludes our chapter nine part two if you have any questions with anything uh with that please make sure to talk to mr bone or mr smith and a reminder sorry about the interruptions there as it was seniors last day <laughs>